Hey guys, before I get into today's video, I wanted to say there are 15 days left to enter the Yonaha Art Challenge. Once again, the theme is space, and you can do any medium, drawing, painting, photography, animation, physical, digital, doesn't matter. I would also like to say that it is AAPI Heritage Month, also known as Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And as an Okinawan descent, I would like to bring awareness to the island of Okinawa. And for this month, I have done a design that I plan on releasing soon. Um, I will put it up here. That artwork is of a singer from Okinawa named Misako Oshiro. And I will play a few seconds of her music here. Now, traditional Okinawan music isn't for everybody, but I grew up around it, and I think that some people need to hear it. One last thing, I have shirts made. These are high quality. Um, I don't have many, but I have a couple for myself, and uh, I'll be working on getting more out. So, now for what you clicked on the video for. Today is about Junji Ito's Uzumaki. Now, spoiler warning, I will be talking about this book in good detail. Um, I would suggest reading it for yourself. Uzumaki takes place in the town of Kurozucho. It is a coastal town in Japan which is suffering from a curse. That curse is not a spirit, it's not a person, it is a pattern called a spiral. Also translates to Uzumaki. So let's start by saying Junji Ito is one of my favorite artists of all time. His horror is on a different level. It's like if he were HP Lovecraft without being a horrible person. The first chapter in the book is called The Spiral Obsession Part 1 and this is such a perfect start to the book. It, the protagonist of the book's name is Kirie Goshima. Kirie encounters her boyfriend's father, who is observing a snail on the wall. He tells her that he is just kind of dumbfounded, enamored by the shape of the snail, the spiral, which is a lot of foreshadowing. It is also just what a part of what makes this horror so deep is that these spiral shapes occur in nature in ways that you wouldn't even have thought of before which will come up later in this video. Her boyfriend Shuichi's father has an obsession, hence the title of the chapter. He collects everything he can find with spirals on it. Tapestry, small objects, large objects, anything. But his obsession does not end there. He goes to Kirie's father, who is a potter, and he asks for his own piece, a spiral piece, because the art of ceramics involves spinning. And he was just so obsessed until Shuichi's mother throws away his collection of spirals, which drives him over the edge. He decides, I am going to turn myself into a spiral. And that he does. He learns how to independently roll his eyes. He learns how to fold up his tongue into like, like a chameleon shape. But it just doesn't end there. Shuichi's father buys a tub so he could cram himself into it turning himself into the spiral and that's how he dies and we are greeted with this disturbing imagery of him completely twisted in completely impossible ways the chapter ends with his cremation because this is his death this kicks off one of many cremations where the ashes floating up into the sky form a spiral i gave this chapter a 10 out of 10 this was a flawless piece of horror fiction, which sends us into chapter two. The Spiral Obsession Part Two. Now, I'm not going to summarize as much, but I will continue. Shuichi's mother has been so traumatized by what had just happened that anything spiral related is absolutely terrifying to her. It gets to a point where she cuts off all her hair, she cuts off her fingertips, and she's, you know, hospitalized. And uh, Kirie realizes that there are diagrams on the wall displaying spirals that are within the human body. And ultimately, that leads to her learning in a dream 
because she is having nightmares about her husband's death. And she has this dream about the centipede, which forms a spiral, and it tells her that there are spirals in her ears, which leads to her ultimately stabbing herself in the ears and experiencing vertigo, which makes her feel for the last moments of her life like she is spinning. And the imagery surrounding this is just amazing. It's horrifying, but it always manages to include the spirals. I gave chapter two a 10 out of 10. I initially sat down to read like five pages of this and I ended up not stopping until I was about 180 pages in. Unfortunately, these two chapters were the fa my favorite part of the whole book. So there was a decline from this point onward for me. So chapter three is the scar. Now, this chapter, Kirie goes to school with another girl who has this little crescent moon shaped scar on her forehead. Kirie learns a rumor about her that this scar she has attracts boys and that they are basically incapable of rejecting her or not having feelings for her. And she wants to go meet Kirie's boyfriend Shuichi for whatever reason but Shuichi freaks out on sight of her she comes back to him angry because no one has ever reacted to her like that before in fact he has to like her because that's how everyone has treated her before now this is a thing about the theme of spirals is that they're they're kind of hallucinogenic and they have this influence on people which is something that occurs throughout the rest of the story her crescent moon shaped scar grew into a spiral which spread from just the center of her forehead all the way across her body. So this chapter ends with uh, the spiral growing to the point where her eyes flow to the back of her head and her like all that's left is her mouth. I thought the imagery was amazing. I don't care too much for the end of this chapter. She lures Suriti out with another guy and basically eats him alive with the spiral and then the spiral consumes her and then she vanishes and then it ends there. I still give this an 8 out of 10 because it has the right themes, it has amazing artworks, but narratively I didn't care too, as much for this chapter. The next chapter was the firing effect. Kirie learns her father had been making clay from Dragonfly Pond which is where the ashes of uh, the last several people who were cremated ended up. Within his works, she starts to see faces of the people that had gone missing or died, including Shuichi's father and mother. And this is another instance of the influence of the spiral making people act irrationally. Um, her father is seen using the furnace and she is told not to go down there. But she goes anyway, and she sees that there are screaming, like, the faces of the people that had died within the furnace. And, you know, they go crazy, and she basically destroys it. Yeah, it kind of ends with the, the furnace getting kind of put out. I would give this chapter a 9 out of 10, because it continues that spiral theme, and it also shows how people act really irrationally because of the influence of the spiral. I think that a great aspect of horror is when people start acting unpredictably or out of control. And Junji Ito is one of the masters at depicting this. I will say that this starts a trend in the story of Kirie being kind of a clueless protagonist. I don't know if this is intentionally part of the themes, but she seems to witness a lot of horrible things and just kind of go on like nothing's happening. Like... Within the last few chapters, she has witnessed her boyfriend's parents die and a girl from her school just vanished into thin air. Yet, when her boyfriend Shuichi freaks out about the spirals, she just plays it off like, oh, he's been acting weird lately. And I find that really bizarre. I'm wondering if that's just the, the influence of the spiral causing her to act strange as well. So, I'm going to speed it up for a lot of these middle chapters
Twisted Souls is a good chapter. It's a story about this couple whose parents don't want them to be together. Their parents are just psychotic. Like, they think that one's a bad influence on the other and so forth. It's a classic, like, Romeo and Juliet type story, which results in their bodies getting twisted together, and they kind of just dive into the ocean as a long, conjoined body. I like the metaphor. I like how it's an interesting take on, like, a Romeo and Juliet situation. And it also plays into the theme of the, the spiral. So I give Twisted Souls a solid 7 out of 10. Medusa is a good chapter. Medusa is the first chapter that had me not super interested in continuing, but it's... There's not many of these chapters that I didn't like. Medusa is the chapter depicted on the cover of the book, which is hard to tell, but basically this chapter is about Kirie's hair becoming spirals, and it starts to stand up all weird and swirl around, and this other girl at school gets jealous and makes her hair all spirally, and then they have a hair battle, and then the other girl's hair gets so long that her body decomposes and she dies, and... Uh, Shuichi saves Kirie by cutting her hair, and for the rest of the story, she has short hair. I did not like this chapter that much. Uh, I feel like compared to where we started, this is a very comical, not so scary chapter. It still has the themes of the spiral, but there was not much for me in this one. I give Medusa a 6 out of 10, which is followed by one of my favorites in the book. Jack in the Box chapter follows this boy at school who kept jumping in front of Kirie because his thing is that he likes to scare people. He likes to he likes surprises. And it's a pretty concise short story, but he gives her a gift. She tells him off like she doesn't like him like that. She has a boyfriend. And he basically stands in the road and says that his love for her will save him. And then he gets mauled to death by a car, which was pretty funny, but pretty graphic. Um, the remainder of the story, she opens this jack-in-the-box and it's, you know, a jack-in-the-box. It, it's a surprise, like how he likes surprises. But what ties this into the story is that a jack-in-the-box has a spring and a spring is a spiral. It doesn't end there though. The jack-in-the-box instructs her to go dig up his body. So her and Shuichi go and that's when his body springs out of his coffin and attacks them because the spring within the car's wheel lodged itself in his body, effectively turning him into a jack-in-the-box. I thought in terms of the theme and in terms of just the artwork and everything, this chapter was a 9 out of 10. One of my favorites. Oh, that's frustrating. Camera died. I hope that wasn't long ago. The next chapter was really interesting. It's called The Snail. This follows Kirie again, and she's at school. And this guy comes to class who's always late, and he only shows up when it's raining. Based on the title of the chapter, I'm like, okay, I get it. He's a snail because he's slow, and snails come out when it's raining. And it didn't hit me that there was more to that until I was later in the chapter. But these kids bully him, and as they basically disrobe him in the locker room he has a spiral on his back and that spiral grows into a shell because this man this boy is turning into a snail he shows up to school as a literal snail and uh you know his parents are informed and they don't believe it and blah 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 they put the snail in a cage and the kid who was bullying him goes missing because the bully also turned into a snail so they put the two snails in a cage and then they start reproducing and then they break out. Um, it's a weird chapter. I'm gonna give this one a nine out of 10, not because of the horror, not because of anything in particular, except for the fact that this plays into the rest of the story in a huge way. The Black Lighthouse was a great chapter. Kirie's little brother, Mitsuo, I believe is his name, really wants to go into this lighthouse, inconspicuously lighting up at dawn every day. And the people that decided to go up into the tower caught themselves 
running in circles uncontrollably. Now, I like that kind of that aspect of the story. Unfortunately, that doesn't, you know, play into the rest of the story. I was hoping that there'd be a compounding effect with all of these chapters, but that's something that doesn't come up again later. At some point, the lighthouse starts burning everyone to a crisp who makes it to the top. Also, lighthouses, not only do they spin, but the staircase is a spiral. Uh, that's why it's important. Her brother ends up going and she chases him up and one of his friends get burnt to a crisp while they barely escape. That's pretty much how this chapter wraps up. I give the lighthouse, the black lighthouse, a 9 out of 10. It's lighthouses have a really good place in fiction and... I didn't even realize that like, oh yeah, spiraling staircases. Once you've read this book, you will see them everywhere. And I feel like that's what makes the horror of it so good. The next few chapters are phenomenal. So Kirie injures herself, saving her brother from the lighthouse. I'm making, uh, not right now. Kirie injured herself, saving her brother from the lighthouse. So she's in the hospital for the next two chapters. What happens in these chapters is some of the best imagery in the entire book. So, first off, mosquitoes fly in a spiral-like pattern, especially when they're in a swarm. And people, particularly pregnant women, were being targeted by these mosquitoes, leaving them covered in bumps from head to toe. Now, I feel like these chapters are the most classic Junji Ito stuff where some kind of regular thing in nature becomes a supernatural force. People are found the next morning in the hospital with all the blood drained from their bodies and their bodies covered in holes. The pregnant women who were bitten by these mosquitoes were getting up in the middle of the night and cutting holes in the other patients and drinking their blood in an attempt to vitalize their babies that they were giving birth to. What thickens the plot of this is Kirie's cousin is one of these pregnant women. She ends up fighting them off with bug spray because Shuichi came to the hospital earlier and was spraying bug spray at mosquitoes, which I totally overlooked until it came back up later in the chapter. And the next morning, you know, everyone's okay. No one remembers except for the, you know, the people that died. But no one believes what Kirie saw. It was all just gone. And her sister's baby is born, along with all the other babies in the hospital, which goes to the next chapter. I give Mosquitoes a 10 out of 10. I thought this was a really well illustrated chapter. It's classic Junji Ito. The next chapter, The Umbilical Cord, was really interesting. So the babies are sprouting these mushroom-like organs from their, you know, their umbilical cords. And those mushroom-like things are being harvested and fed to the patients in the hospital. And to them, it is absolutely addicting. They can't stop eating it. And first of all, that's disgusting. Kitty A finds out that the, the doctor who had delivered all these babies was harvesting these intentionally. And there's this supernatural moment where Kirie hears the babies discussing with the, amongst each other that they want to be put back into their mothers. And the doctor is under this influence of, I need to put them back, that's what they want. So of course the first one he does this to as an experiment is Kirie's mother, sorry, was Kirie's cousin. Kirie's cousin, so she confronts the doctor and asks where her cousin is in which he is, she is brought to this room where we have this disgusting imagery of her cousin with the baby already stitched back inside of her. And she is just thirsting for blood in which the doctor tries to give Kitty as a sacrifice. And this backfires because the cousin breaks free and, you know, starts drinking the doctor's blood instead. And a bunch of patients show up and they start eating the weird baby mushrooms. And then they are also victims of the mosquito mom cousin. I give this chapter another 10 out of 10. I thought that this was another classic Junji Ito horror with amazing illustrations. 
I just it keeps opening up that problem I have with Kirie as a character where boyfriend's parents, two girls from school, this couple, her cousin are all dead or dying or monsters or something. And she's just kind of apathetic about it. The next chapter is the storm. Kirie escapes from the hospital in which that mosquito lady is never seen again and never mentioned again. And there are these typhoons and tornadoes and all this stuff going on. And it's um, they, it comes in waves, but the first one lasted a few days. Now Kirie, stupidly enough, goes out to bring Shuichi food in which he runs into her and he they run from the storm, which the storm happens to be targeting her for reasons that I don't still understand, but I'm just going to assume because she's the main character and it has to happen. But um, it's, uh, I didn't care too much for this chapter. It's just a natural disaster that's targeting her. The tornado's throwing trees and cars and whatnot, and they're just running from it the whole time. The storm destroys a lot of the town, which leads to like advancing the plot because people end up moving into these really ancient homes, which is like present in the next chapters. But I didn't care for this supernatural, like, disaster aspect. The storm is still a 7 out of 10. Very few of these chapters I can actually say are bad, but, like, some of them were disappointing, and this was one of them for me. I, yeah, 7 out of 10. The house is an interesting chapter. Kirie's family is relocated into one of those ancient homes in which they have some odd neighbors. The neighbor on the left seems really friendly at first, but he tells them not to go to the neighbor on the right because it's a creepy old lady with a dying son. Uh, we get a glimpse of this creepy old lady and she has these horns, thorns, spirals growing out of her body. And supposedly her son dies and she's never heard from again. But Kirie's father starts developing these growths on his body, and so does the rest of her family. And they get larger and larger, and her neighbor is watching them through a hole in their wall for some reason. But then he also becomes infected by these these warts, these growths. Chapter kind of ends with them deciding they can't stay here. This house is the reason that they're growing these. And then their neighbor is completely covered in these weird thorns and they have to escape from him, which concludes the chapter. I, I give this one an 8 out of 10 because it's just one of those classic Junji Ito ones in a way. The illustrations and the body horror aspects really carry this chapter. The next two chapters are probably my least favorite in the entire book, and I wish these weren't even a thing. Butterflies. We're now introduced to a new character who is a news reporter from somewhere else, and her crew is lost or injured, and she goes to find help. But every time you make sudden movements or yell, um, a hurricane or a tornado or a typhoon is formed. She sees these kids tied up on poles and she lets them free. And then they start spewing tornadoes everywhere. Yeah, so she accidentally blows them away by creating a tornado and they come back because they can ride the tornadoes. I get that tornadoes are a spiral and that's been a thing since the storm chapter, but I didn't I didn't need this to be a thing in the book. So she finds other survivors, including Kirie and her family, and they yell at her because, you know, you let those kids free and now they're blowing people up again. Butterflies, I give a 6 out of 10. I liked the beginning with the news reporter, like, going for help. I hated these kids with the tornadoes and stuff. And we're going to the next chapter, which is my least favorite in the whole book. Chaos. This gang of people who ride tornadoes. It is the worst illustration in the book. It is just absolutely unnecessary to me. I did not like this at all. They ride tornadoes and they're just like weird steampunk gangsters and they cook and eat the classmate snails alive and they offer to give some to Kirie, but she refuses because she knows that those were once human. They launch Kirie up into the sky along with the news reporter and others. And Shuichi, who was just kind of hanging onto a telephone pole, catches her before she ends up drowning in a lake. I hated this chapter. 5 out of 10. It was the worst chapter in the book for me, undoubtedly.
So then we're back on track with the erosion. There's this group of people that kind of tag along with Kirie, and they notice that one of their people are becoming one of the snails. And this guy starts freaking out, but they, you know, they realize like, wow, these snails taste amazing. We're going to wait for him to transform and we're going to eat him. And we're shown imagery that is some of my favorite in the entire book because they go back to one of those housing units, the, the really ancient ones. And it's so packed with people that they become twisted and intertwined together. And it is one of those body horror ones that I think Junji Ito is the absolute master of. Kirie is looking for her father in this chapter because at the end of the previous one, he got blown away and she's, you know, she doesn't know where he went. She does find Mitsuo, her little brother, who at the end of this chapter, she discovers is also becoming a snail. I really like when this is done in stories, especially in this way. It reminds me of The the Walking Dead when, like, uh, I'm talking about the Telltale Walking Dead, when Lee gets bitten and then it's like a matter of time, but you know that this is an inescapable thing. Erosion, I give an 8 out of 10. It was a good chapter, I just don't like the whole tornado aspect. Now, Escape is a really good chapter as well, and we're very close to the end of the story. Shuichi, Kirie, and uh, her brother Mitsuo, and I think the news reporter girl are all just uh, wandering. Uh, they're trying to get out of town. They're going to walk this path, and that other group of people with the snail guy are following along. And they find that no matter how far they walk, no matter which path they take, they always end up where they started. And what I love about this is the time and space seem to become irrelevant here because I guess that'll make more sense in the Labyrinth chapter. But uh, the other group realized that their extra guy has fully become a snail. And instead of cooking him, they just climb into the shell and eat him raw. And that is some of the most disgusting thing I could ever think of. And it's just... Mitsuo becomes a snail and they can't hide him anymore so they take off running and they put him on the side of a cliff so that he can crawl away because they're not going to be able to follow him and they realize that they can't run out of town they're going to be stuck on an endless loop forever so they head back to the town which has become something entirely different. Escape was an 8 out of 10 for me. I love this chapter. Uh, just the the slow descent into becoming a snail for Mitsuo was really great. The labyrinth is those little ancient homes that were getting too packed with people. They started expanding them outward. And what happened was they expanded in a spiral to where they make a spiral into the center of town which surrounds the dragonfly pond which is where the ashes of the dead went to so everything kind of heads back to there which is what i think is the the thing that ties everything together in the story i just that's one of the my favorite aspects of junji ito they realize how could they have built all this in the time that we were gone and they run into another character that they briefly met in the previous chapters who had aged significantly because he spent years just adding on to these houses and all the people in the houses are still tangled together and they're throwing out rotten corpses and the entirety of this time they're just trying to get to the center of the loop and the the news reporter girl gets dragged into one of the the tangled up people and she is never seen again so now we're left with just Shuichi and Kirie and that's the end of the labyrinth chapter I give this one a 9 out of 10. final chapter is called completion and in this chapter there is no more dragonfly pond just a hole in the center of the labyrinth and there's a stairway in the labyrinth that they start to walk down before Suichi is pulled in by one of those spiraled people that are just all tangled up so Kirie runs and to the bottom of the spiral staircase and she is just in this 
whole other dimension that's been underneath the town. And Shuichi magically comes to the conclusion that the, these ancient homes are like meant to stand through the spirals and that this happens every few centuries or so. Um, I don't know how he came to that conclusion, but probably wasn't wrong. Underneath the ground is this giant, looks like a kingdom of spirals. In searching for Shuichi after he fell, Kirie finds her two parents tangled together and solidified. They are gone. This part is controversial, but Kirie finds Shuichi who says, I can't walk, I give up, I can't go on, you must go on without me. In which she says, I can't go on either. And she sits with him and they become tangled together and then they have become part of the spiral and that is the end. I gave completion a 10 out of 10. I did not need this to, you know, go on further and end with her defeating the spiral or ending the curse. I think what's great about Junji Ito's horror is that it always doesn't turn out good for the protagonist, but it's always in a me more meaningful, more powerful ending. Because a lot of, I'd say, Western horror ends with the main characters overcoming and defeating whatever supernatural force there is. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. And I think that that, that kills the story a lot of the time. Like, um... Uh, Stephen King's It, for example, I feel like no one's satisfied with how they kill Pennywise and they're never going to make a way where it's satisfying. So that was Uzumaki by Junji Ito. And my average score for these chapters comes out to 8.3. But because of the artwork and because of just the masterful storytelling and all these things, I would round up to a 9. I give Uzumaki a 9 out of 10. It is one of... The best works of horror ever made. I just wish that the whole chaos chapter wasn't a thing and that these tornado throwing children weren't part of the story, but m maybe some people like that, but I didn't. Otherwise, that is the review. Um, if you've read it, comment what you thought of it. If you disagree with what I said, let me know and I'll uh, hopefully you can change my mind. Remember 15 days to enter the art challenge. If you want some Yonaha merchandise, I have a red bubble linked in the description. Um, I, I, I really need that support. If you can't support me financially, I understand. If you would like to share this content with other people that you think would like it, that would help out a lot. I'd like to thank our patrons, Carrie Smith and Jason K. You guys are amazing. And anyways, thank you guys for watching. <laughs>